Villa? Yes, it's as we were. No, no problems from the weekend. The good news is you're keeping clean sheets. You've got two very, very good goalkeepers. You have a number one now at Chelsea. Um, well, I always think that it's, uh, it's better to let football decide, and Kepa's done really well. He's been supported fantastically by Edu and uh, and Betts there, and uh, they they provide good competition. But um, I think Kepa's form is really pleasing for everybody, especially him. So it's nice that we've got uh, competition in, the, in in that area because you need that in the team. You need to push each other, and that's how you get players better. You've had a lot of personal accolades, accolades for your career. But you always mention your coaching team and your goalkeeping coach you bring with you. It sounds a very special one. Yeah, well, we think so. Um, that's why we that's why we brought him with us. Um, did fantastic at, at Brighton with 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 Rob, and um, he's a good guy, uh, good around the group, and then he works the keepers really well. Um, creates a nice environment, I think, for them to push themselves, to enjoy their football, and to be stimulated. So he's an important member of the staff. Ben Sicaria signed on deadline day on loan. You weren't here, obviously, at the time. There's talk that he might be being sent back in January. No, there's no decision to be made at all on that. Um, Dennis has been in the group. He's he's been training well. He's ready to help the team. Obviously, there's competition for places in that area, but uh, there's there's no talk of anything. He's he's an, he's an important member of the team, um, and he's been patient and he's trying to help the team from the side at the moment and waiting for his chance. And is there any other any contract talks in, uh, regarding Jorginho? No, no, no updates. And finally, Graham, obviously managers have been talking about it these past few days. What, what's your plan for the World Cup? Because obviously you've got a large part of the squad. We're going to Qatar. I know some managers will be having two weeks off and then some will be having a warm weather training. Has that been decided yet? Uh, we're probably in the planning stage. We'll have some, of course, some time off and then we'll, we'll uh, look at a warm weather camp, uh, I think. So a combination of the two, I think. Thanks. Cheers. Alex. Hi, Graham. Hi. Brentford had less than 30% well that's the beauty of football you can never predict but um, <clears throat> I think Brentford are, are really good at what they do Thomas has done a fantastic job there they use they use the quality of the players well they have limited resources if you compare everybody to the Premier League but they make the most out of what they have and that's a credit to Thomas and his staff and all the players there at Brentford are, uh, I'm always impressed with their with the job they do. They use uh, Ivan Tony well, uh, but it's not just that. They attack with clarity and they defend with the aggression and organisation, so they're a, a tough team to play against. So we've talked about Thomas Frank potentially being a super candidate to take over from you at Brighton. How highly do you rate him as a manager? Very, very. I've followed his career since I've come back to the UK and I knew, I knew him when I was in Sweden as well, so I know him well. I like him as a person. Uh, we have similar thoughts, I think, around the game and life in general. Uh, and then, like I said, uh, I think a coach is judged on how much he gets out of the players, how much he organises the team, how, how the results are in comparison to the expectation of those results, and he does a fantastic job. Less than six weeks for you here, no defeats, five wins now in a row. Did you expect to start as good as this one? Well, um, naturally, I'm not the most optimistic. I'm, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to give you a bit of insight into me there. Um, but you never know. You can't predict anything. But uh, it's gone. It's gone fantastically well in terms of results. I can't complain with that at all. But more than that, I think just the way the group have responded, the way that um, we feel in the in the team is 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 really positive. But it's only, as you said, six weeks. So we've got a long way to go. We need to keep moving. Less than okay. Yeah, it feels like six months sometimes. <laughs> Thank you. Nick. Hi. Hi. Yeah, we need to, obviously, 24, 48 hours, just make sure the recovery is right for him. But um, no problems injury-wise, it's just the recoveries. Okay. And um, just on the Kepa, obviously, he's, across his time being at Chelsea, there were times when he maybe could have left, didn't, you know, he sort of dug in and, and, and tried to, you know, fight hard for, for opportunities. I mean, how, appreciate, obviously, it's, it's, there's less change in there naturally with goalkeepers, but how, how big would it be for him now to have had this run of games Irrespective of what happens in the long term, just at least he's sort of back into a bit of rhythm and his confidence and everything goes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a human being, player, so they want to play. 
um, and want to contribute and he's doing that so brilliant for him I think it's a nice example for, for everybody that sometimes it doesn't go your way and you have to suffer in life sometimes and things aren't ideal or perfect but um, I must admit I've been really impressed with his character his personality very professional understands the game really well uh, takes responsibility so um, it's nice when the those type of people get the rewards, which is a reward of their hard work and effort. Andy. Hi, Graham. Hi. Um, with Brentford last season against Chelsea, obviously, I know you weren't here, but um, they were two of the toughest games for Chelsea in the league last season. Um, how do they do that with their, you mentioned their sort of limited resources in comparison. I mean, what, what is it that they do so well? Well, they align the resources really really cleverly I think um, they're, the way they play fits the players they have um, they're very organised around that they know clearly what they're doing in all the phases set plays are very dangerous um, like I said Ivan Tony as a centre forward is, is just in, in, in his way I think as dangerous as, as, as anybody in the league so they do that well and um, they, they, they have a spirit and an understanding and they're really well motivated, really well organised, and I think that's credit to Thomas and his staff. But did you admire the way they kind of reacted to the Newcastle uh, defeat in such a sort of together fashion when they played uh, Brighton? Yeah, but I, again, I'm not surprised because Thomas knows the process, he knows the Premier League, he knows that some days you're going to have days where it doesn't go your way or the, op the opponent beats you or... If you're not quite there, then it, you can suffer. But and that's okay; that can happen. But it's just how you respond. And um, they wouldn't have got where they have now if they were unable to understand that or unable to deal with that. So I think that's a credit to them and how they. And it's an example for everybody in terms of how you have to deal with professional sport. Your defensive record, since you've John was mentioned there, has that been particularly pleasing given how you've had to change it around a lot? You haven't had everyone available. Yeah, it is, and it's credit to the players, credit to the group. Like I said, you can't defend with a settled four these days or a settled five, whatever it is, whatever you decide, because the uh, the games are so they're they're relentless and the challenges are huge in that regard. So it's about the team, it's about the group, it's about the togetherness of the of the squad. And um, you know, if you're prepared to suffer, you're prepared to deal with the discomfort in the games then you give yourself a chance to keep a clean sheet and that obviously gives you a chance to win with the, certainly with the quality that we have Can I just ask about Mason as well I know you probably look forward to dealing with lots of players when you were coming here but what's it been like dealing with him his versatility his creativity his sort of will to win as well Yeah it's been I would say it's a joy I mean he's a fantastic person loves the loves to play football loves the club here um, surprising I, I get a few questions that there's some sort of mixed mixed um, opinion on Mason I find that strange when it's, especially from the outside and then when you start to work with him you just think he's, he's, he's got everything you need to be a top top player great attitude um, understands spaces can execute assists scores goals it's top OK last question in the broadcast Adam Hi Graham. Hi I have to involve him in the conversations because he's, as you say, he's 30 years old. He's a he's a man. He knows himself better than better than I do, and um, he's a really important person, really important player for us. But um, we have to manage him correctly, and he has to be involved in that process. Okay, that's the end of the broadcast section. Cameras off, please.